In this tutorial, we're going to build on the previous PyMol video I made, which is called PyMol Active Site in Minutes. Now, you might be sitting there eating a sandwich or passively wanting to watch a PyMol video, but the best way to learn this is to open a PyMol window yourself and work through with me pausing when you need a minute to type commands and sort through things. So I highly recommend that, and let's get to it. We're going to fetch our structure. The structure we're going to work with today is phosphofructokinase 1PFK. When you pull this up, your view will look something like this although it might not quite look like this. Some versions of PyMol, when you pull it up, it looks like this. So you're looking at one of those two views, and now we're gonna all get ourselves to the same view using a preset in PyMol. So if we go to the A, Actions, Preset, and this structure does have water molecules, it has solvent, but we're gonna just do pretty with for now, we'll work with the solvent later. So click on pretty, and now we should all be looking at this nice little cartoon rainbow with our ligands shown as sticks. So that's a pretty nice place to start. Let's reorient this structure a little bit so we can kind of see it and make it look nice. Yeah, I like that. Um, and let's store this as our first scene. So scenes are up here. You can store up to 12 just using the um, drop down menus over here. Or we can type scene 001 store, comma store. Um, and that will give us a scene which shows up right here. Now, I think by typing this, you can store many more scenes than 12. So that's nice if you really want to get going with a complex structure and have lots of scenes to move around in. Now let's display our sequence. And I'm actually using a trackpad. I don't use a three-button mouse like a lot of people like to for PyMol. I got really good at it on a plane. So I'm going to put this in one-button viewing mode, and I'm just using my trackpad. I can um, use the control option and command buttons to do different things, and I can zoom by just using my trackpad, squeezing my fingers in and out. So um, here is our sequence. Notice it starts off dark blue, so we're starting off here. And as we scroll through, you can see the color changing, which corresponds to the rainbow of this protein. As we scroll, we see all of our one letter codes for our two polypeptide chains of this dimer, which ends at the red over here. And then we have a bunch of ligands, so they're separated out, and then all of our water molecules. I find it useful to have a selection, which is just my protein. And so I'm going to click on the end, the uh, C-terminal amino acid residue here, come all the way to the beginning, press shift and click, and now I have all the amino acid residues selected, and I'm going to rename this selection to protein so that I could operate on the ligands and the protein separately if I need to later. Uh, click somewhere in the black just to click away, now, I'm a little bit worried about having the rainbow here because, you know, that's a lot of color to be behind the ligands and our ligands have some orange in it and I don't want it to get confusing. So let's go ahead and color our protein by element and we'll go ahead and color it this cyan. I like this view. Let's go ahead and just store this as another scene. And now let me show you what the scenes are doing. So we're going to click here, we get our different colors. So scenes are storing the color, and as we'll see in a bit, they'll store the orientation for us as well. This is really helpful because you might have noticed PyMol doesn't really undo things very well. So when you make a mistake, you really sometimes end up starting back from scratch. So this is gonna save us a lot of trouble as long as we're storing our scenes whenever we make a good one. Okay, now I want to show an active site. I want to identify an active site. We have a dimer here and we have a lot of ligands bound to it. So let's scroll back down to our ligands. And I just want to focus in on one active site, maybe this top one up here. Let's see, okay. So I clicked on this, these are the um, reaction products. So it says so in the title here. So this is fructose 1,6 bisphosphate right here. And now we want to identify all the other ligands in this active site. You can see we have other ligands kicking around here. So let's click on this magnesium. Oh, I can just barely see it lighting up. Let me zoom a little bit for you. And 
on my Mac, I'm going to click Option and click, and that allows me to move my structure. So you see it right here. So this one is in our active site that we want. Let's click on this one. Well, maybe I need to zoom out just to see where everything is now. Oh yeah, this one is lighting up over here, so that's not one we want. Oh, that ADP is here. Okay, let's just check the others. Yeah, these are all in different parts of the protein. So this is this selection now, these three things that we've clicked have come up as this selection. And let's rename this to ligands. So actions, rename selection, delete that S-E-L-E -E over here, and type ligands. Great. I think you're really going to like this next command. So last time I had you showing the residues around the ligand, but we're going to be able to make a selection in one quick command. So this is the command, select active. That will create a selection called active by residues all within five angstroms of, and this is our selection name. So whatever you called this, if you decided to call this something besides ligands, you just change your selection name here. So let's execute this. And bam, we've got all the residues within about five angstroms. This catches all of our hydrophobic interactions and uh, definitely our ionic and hydrogen bonding. So that's, that's a pretty good active site. So let's show the sticks for the active site. And then let's zoom on the active site. Now, sometimes I like to get a little contrast between these residues and the cartoon. And so for active, let's just uh, go to our colors. And we want to color by element because we want to keep our CPK coloring. And in set five, I believe this one will give me just a little bit darker of residues. So eh, that looks OK. Yeah, and so we have a little contrast. You can see the color change on the backbone here. Now we've done a little bit of work, so let's store this as another scene. So our third scene is here. So if we messed up something along the way, we could always revert back to where we were when we got here. Let's just go to the command line and type show non-bonded. And this is going to show our water molecules. We can see our active site is rich with water. And so if we only show the active site and look for our interactions, we will miss some because some of these inevitably are going to be contacts to water molecules. So we might have water mediated contacts and we don't want to ignore that. So it's wise for us to select some of the water molecules, but we really only want to get the ones that'll be hydrogen bonded to our ligands and maybe our active site residues. Um, also, I'm just noticing that my, my ligands are in blue. Let's go ahead and color our ligands by element and choose this magenta here so we have some contrast and we can see what's actually going on here in this active site. Okay, so here's our command. I'm gonna create a selection called ligand water. And do be careful, when you put the underscores in, you will always have to type underscores uh, when you're typing your selection name. So keeping your selection names short and without spaces actually is going to be very helpful. Um, if you make them really short, you might just need to write down a little code uh, that you're using. But the shorter, the better if you're going to use typed commands. So we're going to select the water around the ligands. So select ligand water. So this is making a selection called ligand underscore water, which I told you just not to use underscores. Um, but then we're going to use ligand here, which um, so actually I think this needs to be ligands. So this is near our ligands selection. It's going to be 3.2 angstroms, the length of a, hyd a typical hydrogen bond. And we're choosing to show the waters. So let's execute this command and we have a selection. Now let's go ahead and I think at this point, let's just show the spheres. And they look really, really huge. So this makes sense because this is actually the van der Waals surface of the water molecule, but we're not looking at anything else in that way. 
And we're going to resize these water molecules, but before we do that, I actually want to get more of the water molecules that are in the active site. I want to get all of those in range of the active site residues as well. So I change this command a little bit. Select active water, so this is the water around the active site residues. This is the selection I'm choosing, this active here, at the same distance and choosing water. So we get a few more highlighting here. Let's show spheres. And because we're looking at this all in sticks, it makes less sense to look at the van der Waals surface of the water, so we're going to resize this. The command we're using now is alter active water uh, to a van der Waals radius of 0.5 angstroms. So I'm going to type that and nothing's going to happen at first. Now I'm going to use my arrow keys. So if you start clicking your up and down arrow keys, you can go through all of your previous commands to alter them. So that's really awesome in Pymol. And so I want to make this ligand water because I want to alter both of them to that van der Waals radius. So alter ligand water. And then we need to type rebuild to actually make the water molecules resize. So that's important to do at the end. Okay, let's zoom in a little and look around. So yeah, we've got lots of waters. We've got a few non-bonded showing up. So I think um, at this point, we probably should have everything that is in range um, for a hydrogen bond, as we'll look at in one moment. And so let's go ahead and just hide non-bonded again so we don't have all of those little water molecules. Okay, remember we had a magnesium in our active site, so that's right here. And boy, it looks tiny, but magnesium actually has a larger van der Waals surface than the water molecules. Let's just click on this to select it, and I'm going to rename it to magnesium. And now let's resize this. So we're going to do a similar thing. Um, so we can go back to this command. We're doing the similar resizing that we did to the spheres of the water. So let's change ligand water to magnesium. And it's, it's bigger. It has a larger van der Waals surface. So let's just make this one. And so we've modified the one atom. Type rebuild. And we need to, this is showing, I don't know what the representation here is with, with the pretty preset, but let's show the sphere. And now that's a nice size. It shows that it's a larger metal ion and uh, it's surrounded by these water molecules. And you can play with these sizes. If you don't like how this looks, you can make the water a little bit um, smaller. All you need to do is change this right here and we could uh, resize things. So if you don't like how this looks, that's fine. <laughs> Go ahead and do something better. Okay, now I think we've done a lot of work. I think this looks pretty, pretty good. Let's get all the ligands in view. And let's store this as a scene. So we want to use Pymol to tell us how these ligands are binding in the active site. So now we're going to do a quick thing that will allow us to see that. So go to Actions next to Ligands here find polar contacts to any atoms. So this is pretty busy, but we're going to utilize this to make a really nice image that tells us some good information. So if we look over here on our molecule, we have a phosphate. So that phosphate is binding to a few residues, and maybe we're really interested in highlighting the way that this is interacting with the amino acids. So we can see we have some contacts of the phosphate to water molecules, so a hydrogen bond with those. And we also have interactions with some residues. So we have histidine, which is potentially charged in the body. We have some arginine residues, which are always charged. Um, and so these are interacting with the phosphate to stabilize it. So this is an ionic interaction here. So we're going to go to wizard and turn on the measurement wizard. And we're going to measure distances. And let's not create a new object because that'll create every time we measure, we'll get a new measurement here. Let's merge with previous since we're trying to show just one 
uh, type of interaction here. So um, now I want to, since I already have the polar contacts up, I can just kind of trace them. And so I got to click on my first atom, then I'm going to click on my second atom. So we got a measurement of 2.7 angstroms here. Uh, we've got an ionic interaction going on right here. So let's click here and here. So that's 3.5. That's a, a little bit further out. And then we have these the histidine up here. We want to show this interacting. And let's just show one of the representative interactions. We don't need to show both of these. Uh, Pymol shows us a lot. But we get the story with just one interaction and not make our image too busy. So click on histidine. Click right here, and yeah, we've got some uh, polar contacts shown. Now let's rename this, and we can turn off all of the ligand polar contacts and really just highlight uh, these interactions going on here. Now, if you are preparing this image for a publication or something like that, you know, Journal articles are white, so it's important to be able to change our background, and so we can go to display, background, change that to white, and fortunately our um, labels change to black so we can see them. And we'll want to orient this in a nice way that we can really see what's going on and see the interactions. Oh, that's looking good. So see, I can see the whole side chain here that this is an arginine. I can see that here as well. We see histidine. We get the... Uh, the gist of the sugar, this is obscuring it a little. I don't know if I can make that. Eh, I liked it better before. That's that's okay. And maybe we think that these uh, measurements are a little bit light against our white background. So we'll take our interactions, color grays, maybe this medium gray. This is a really nice image, and I don't want to lose it. So we're going to store it as a scene. And now let me show you why scenes are so important. So, you know, the, we all have this moment. We're going to recolor something. Maybe we're like, oh, magenta doesn't have a good contrast with the red. So I should recolor my ligands. But somehow you end up, <laughs> or maybe you want to recolor the protein, you end up just like one thing above. This is so small. So we go to one PFK and say, oh, I'm just going to color my ligands all one color for right now. I'm not going to use CPK coloring. We hit orange, and we've lost all the work that we've done. But we haven't because we were using scenes. Go ahead and click on scene five. Everything comes back. We can navigate through our scenes to show all of the water molecules in the active site. We can zoom out a little further. We can go back to our initial representation of our protein and show all of that coloring of the original pretty uh, preset that we used. I hope you'll join me next Monday for the next video in this series and that if you like this video, you leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more Pymol, biochemistry, and organic chemistry.